G'day guys, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. We're going to continue going through our best 17s for 2023. We dropped the other day the Cronulla Sharks, a really good chat there. And today, we're going to get into the New Zealand Warriors. And uh, I've got my 5'8 with me once again, Maddie. I've been putting the Warriors off for a couple of weeks just because it's such a hard team to work out how they'll line up. I, I could honestly make 10 different 17s and I wouldn't be shocked if any of them were started in round one. This is... This is th- Probably the toughest team, I yep. think. I was looking yesterday when we were speaking about the Dragons, how um, not a lot's changed in their roster. So I was looking at the teams that finished below them mm. for 2020 in 2022. So you got Manly, they get Turbo back. That changes everything. you got the Doggies, they've got a few signings. The Titans have a few signings. The Knights have a few signings. And the Tigers have a few signings, right? They're all pretty similar when it comes to like, you know, they've gotten a few gains, not too many losses. The Warriors are so different, right? Yeah. Because they seemed it, it seems to be like a one in, one out type situation. Like their losses and gains are just they're huge. They're, they're massive. massive. And it's and it's a team that came second last last year, a team that it's been so unfair that they haven't been able to play in New Zealand. You know, they literally saved the comp in twenty twenty. It's just they're so hard to get a read on because it's almost like the, f- the last few years don't really count. Yeah. So, is this gonna is this a fresh start for the Warriors? I don't know because if they didn't lose Reese Walsh, I'd probably say yes, and I'd probably be like he- heaps pumped. But they lost Walsh, and obviously they've got Chance now, which is great. They've got Tamara Martin, which is great. But they've kind of gone. They haven't improved. That, that, that's not improvement. That's it's sideways at best, you know. So, I don't know. I don't. I don't even know who's going to play fullback. Like it's. Well, I mean, mate. When I have a look through this side, there's names that stick out to me: Chance, Tamara Martin, Nick Corey, Curran, Metcalf, Walker. Yep. I have no fucking clue what position any of those that's, guys. And are that's play. what I mean. Yeah. And like, it's hard to get a read on a team that you don't actually know where where everyone's going to play. And I think the Warriors, like, they're they're my second team this year. Like. I want him to go so well. Got a few second teams, just quietly. No, nah, no, nah, I said the Sharks are my almost my second team. The Sharks and Knights are almost my second team, but the Warriors are my second team this sort year. Sort of guy like you would only have one team, but that's all right. <laughs> um, and, mate, I'll be like, we we found a best 17 online, and I was having a look through that, and they didn't have Jazz in their team, and I thought, I've got to put him in there. And yep. as soon as I put Jazz in there, mate, it just caused a domino effect yeah. of me manoeuvring guys around it. it it's, it's an absolute nightmare working out this side. But I, I feel sorry for... Um, <laughs> Whoever had to make that team because there are just there's so many different combinations. It starts with the fullback and it finishes at the thirteen, and then it spills over to the bench and everywhere in between. It's it's crazy. Yeah, it's tough. And I mean, at the same time though, it's great for the Warriors to have so much competition in positions. Uh, there's like all the guys I just mentioned are locked in for a spot, but I've got no idea where that spot is. It yep. could be in so many different spots. Probably Metcalf's the only one I'm not confident he's going to be in that side. I mean, I didn't even mention my boy Volkman in that list as well. He's another mm. one that could come into calculations. So, uh, I think yeah. they've, they've signed really, really well. Yes. Really, really well. It's just, as I said before, because they lost Walsh and also Ewan Aiken, who was good for him last year, but definitely more so uh, Reese Walsh. Um, it just throws a little spanner in the works, doesn't it? Oh, I think that Aiken is a huge loss, but I think they've done enough to cover Aiken. Yeah. And I think they've got enough in the squad to cover Aiken anyway. Yeah. Walsh, though, he's going to leave big. a massive hole. It's big. Especially, and, you know, touch what it turns around, especially the form we saw from SJ last year. Pretty disappointing, obviously, away from home and whatnot. Hopefully back at home we see, you know, the SJ that we've known and loved for so long. But if he doesn't fire... I'm really worried that Walsh is going to leave a massive hole in this side. Yeah, I agree. But as you said, I think going home... See, even even though they went home last year, like you take the Warriors-Titans game, for example. Like, I remember tipping the Warriors just purely because they were at home. Obviously, both teams were kind of out by that point. And the Warriors had a huge lead. I turned the TV off and thought, well, I didn't actually watch the whole game. But <laughs> at, at the point, I was like... Right. Your second favourite team. Well, War- Warriors, Warriors have won this. All good. <laughs> yeah. Titans came back and won by a point, I'm pretty sure. And I guess you could put that down to like the, just the fatigue of the whole year, the whole last three years. I'm just hoping we don't see that this year. I'm hoping they have a genuine home ground advantage this year. Full preseason in New Zealand, I'm assuming. I, did they have a preseason in New Zealand last year? Or I think it was split. 
it was split. Yeah. So that even that that's disruptive that's as, as, as hell. Yeah. I just hope they're settled. I hope they're happy. Mostly, I hope they're happy. Um, and I and I hope this it becomes a genuine home ground advantage from this year. Now, before we do start this side, I just want to give a little shout out to the Warriors, and I'm not sure if anyone would give a flying fuck about this outside of you or me, but their social media content. Oh, it's the best. It is off the fucking charts. It is incredible. Yeah, it is top shelf. It is very, I almost want to say it's like Americanized to that level, but it still is just the New Zealand Warriors. Mm. Like it, it just sums them up perfectly. It does everything feel, it about, feels it like them, fits. doesn't it? It's perfect. So shout out to the Warriors team. I like to tag them in everything I possibly can to let them know. I think they're fucking killing oh, it. Oh, they're, they're awesome. And I wish other teams would get on board. Yeah. They posted a video the other day, which I thought was tremendous. They were obviously at the sand dunes that they train out where, unfortunately, um, Sunny Fire passed away a couple of years ago. And mate, I got so fucking emotional watching it. Really? It rattled me. Yeah, you should, should have a look at it. It's very, look. very good. So shout out to the Warriors. Do you know um, who that person is who does it? No. I want to find that out. If you can follow. find that out, I yeah. Follow. i tell you who was good as well. Did you follow Lebanon in the World Cup? I actually had a bit to do with the media manager. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. very, very nice. I can't remember his name. Very nice guy. He, he was fantastic. He they, they brought him on full time to do that. He went mm. over there with them. So so the media manager did the social stuff? I believe, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was the media manager. Yeah, yeah I right. could be wrong. But anyway, the, the guy that did it, he, he's, oh, I can't remember his name. He's been around like New South Wales Cup. And, but he had a, he, he, he said, I said to him, hey, I'm going to talk about the Lebanon side and over the next few weeks, anyone to keep an eye on. Mate, he, he sent me this document that he'd done where he went through pretty much everyone that hadn't played first grade, told me their whole story and everything. So shout out to I Lebanon. Like uh, obviously, you know, a, a lot of people might not have taken notice of their social media and just social media in general. But in order for our game to go to that next level, mm. every single fucking team mm. needs to be levelling up every single season. Le Lebanon won the World Cup for me when it Socials. comes to social media. Yeah, 100%. No doubt. Yeah, and the Warriors, it is a knockout victory at just, the moment. Just follow them. Just follow them. Doesn't matter who you support. It's just, it's just cool. Yeah. They post cool shit. That's yeah. what I love. Yeah, you know, like, like and I, I saw the other day. You know, they they released. You know, they, they're not the Vodafone Warriors anymore. They're the One Warriors. Mm. And even like that little circle in the middle, like I saw them taking the piss out of that with like a Dragon Ball Z meme and all these other sort of like they they just they just get it. They get it. Yeah. They you're able to relate to what the Warriors are doing. I absolutely love it. I really hope. You know, as you said, mate, they've done the biggest fucking overs of all time for the NRL over the last few years. Yeah. Their social media is killing it. Yeah. Um, all good guys, all guys, all guys that I like as well. So hopefully, uh, we can see a bit of a resurgence over there. And you know, as you said as well, I can't tell you how disappointed I am that they've got nothing this year. They don't have home. They don't have extra home games. They don't. I just. And you know, I understand there's a whole business side to it. I'm talking completely off the dome here, but I don't understand how there wasn't help with the salary cap, more home games, I don't know, some, anything. I'd love to know why. And I, you're right. There's definitely a reason, and I'm, yeah. and I'm sure it's a justified reason. But, like, because we don't know, we're all just like, oh, well, why not? Why not? And imagine, like, if we would have had to have gone in round 20 and take it to 15 teams and have a bye every week after the first two weeks, it would have been fucking carnage. Mm. Imagine, like, I just... Also, though, like, because the Tigers, credit to them, are taking a home game to yep. New Zealand... But, like, if, if the NRL forced every team to take one home game to New Zealand and played in regional New Zealand, then it be suddenly becomes an even playing field again to, to, to the other 16 teams. The other 16, yeah. But we don't need to be fair to the Warriors. They, they went way over for us the last three years. 100%. Seriously. Yeah, it's rough. And yeah, shout out to the West Tigers too. And I'm sure they're not the only team that are doing it, but I know that the Tigers have done it. And I know for a fact that other teams have said, no, we can't afford to do it. So, and that's, and, that's, and it's, if you can't afford to do it, that's fine. But like, I just, I wish there could have been something done to ensure that everyone went over there. Yeah. I mean, I think it's one of those things, even if you can't afford, find a way. I think you just gotta you gotta work something out. Mm. But anyway, it's a tough one, hard to get a, a, an answer for. But yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed that the Warriors are just having to cop this on the chin and move forward. So hopefully they can get some success off the back of it, um, mate. We'll get into their back line now. <laughs> the first headache, fullback. Uh, the coach pretty much came out and said the other day that he believes Chance will line up in the one uh, for the Warriors this year, which I really like. Uh, other option is probably Tamara Martin. He played yeah. there for the Broncos last season in bits and pieces. I probably think Tamara is more of a six anyway, so I'm happy to throw the one jersey the way of Chance and Clockstar. Would he be your guy? Yeah, uh, yeah, yes. 
I'm not saying this with confidence because I'm not too sure. <sighs> Two good options. I guess it. it's when you take it at face value, I'm going chance. Mm. But then how, like when it, when you fit it, have to fit everyone else in, that's when it becomes a little more difficult. Talk us through your thought process. You explain well, what you're thinking. If you have if you have Tamara Martin at fullback, yep. that means you can play both Metcalf and Dylan Walker because you've yep. got Tamara Martin at fullback, you got Chance at four, you got Luke Metcalf at six, and you got Dylan Walker at fourteen. This has gone off the sporting news article and I just realized, shout out to Liam O'Loughlin. I actually went to school with this bloke, he's a fucking legend. He wrote this article. But so that way you can get all those people, all those players in the team. Whereas even though I think Chance is a better fullback, then you, like, then do you put Tamara Mann at six, put Dylan Walker at 14, and then where does Luke Metcalf go? Because the coach, Andrew Revis, has already come out and said Walker's going to be 14. Yep. So is it better for the team if you, you have Mann at fullback, Metcalf at six, Chance at centre, Walker at 14? Or do you go Chance at fullback, someone else at centre, Tamara Mann at six, and then Dylan Walker at 14? Or... Like one of those three, one of those guys is going to miss out. So do you fit them all in the team or do you put your best fullback at fullback? Yeah, and I think this is where, as well, if you were to play chance at centre, I think the Warriors' biggest problem over the last few years has been their edge defence. Mm, it's yeah. been fucking shambles. And chance, whenever he has played centre, from what I've seen, he, he has looked pretty strong there. So he could be a decent option at centre and you would be able to get Tamara Martin and a Metcalf in the side. The other option is playing Metcalf at fullback, yep. uh, which, you know, then you could obviously play Tamara Martin at six. You could have uh, Chance in, in at the centre. So plenty of options there, whichever direction they want to go. It sounds like Webster is leaning towards Chance, yep. uh, which I understand. Like it wasn't that long ago, Chance was playing in a grand final and was close to the best on the field. He, he literally went too hard in that grand final. Oh, yeah. He had, he had to get taken off yeah. because he went too hard. But, yeah, if you put Chance at fullback, obviously that opens up a centre spot and we'll talk about who could fit there later because yeah. that's another point of discussion. I won't say it right now, but that's another huge question. So, yeah, it's a lot of moving pieces in this team. Before we get to that, I think wingers sort of picked themselves. I'd be going for Dallin Matenis lesniak I think he yep. locks himself on one wing. The other one, you got Marcelo Montoya and Ed Cossey. I'd be going for Montoya personally. Yeah. I think Ed Cossey is a good little replacement to have, but I think Montoya and DWZ. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, but you wouldn't, you, you can't go wrong with Cossey as well. Yeah. Good, good, um, good player. Fuck, it's good to have a conversation about this team that isn't difficult. Um, centers, let's open up the can of fucking worms. So some names that pop up here. Pompey, Valia, Berry. You've also got Chance you could play there. The other one who, when I look at that entire list, as far as a complete player, he might not be a centre, but he is the best centre, Marata Nekore. He is one that I think seriously needs to be considered. And, mate, as soon as you spoke about then potentially playing Tamari Martin or Metcalf at fullback and having a centre pairing of Chance and Nekore, that is really appealing to me. Yeah, it seems a lot, but like, defensively a lot, just a lot more safe. If they run out with... You know, Adam Pompey, Valia, Berry, those guys, any of those guys in the centres, that writes my game plan for me. I know mm. who I'm going at. I know what I'm going to do. All of a sudden, you throw near Corey and Chance in there, that changes things a little bit. Yep. So, so many options. And look, Berry, I think he's going to be a superstar. You all know I, I love Valia as well. They are very young. They are very raw. I think that giving them the opportunity to go back and play New South Wales Cup and be in a proper, you know, a system where they're at home week to week, they're training with first grade, they're in reserve grade compared to what they've experienced the last few years. I, I think that th these guys are probably a little bit behind their development because of the environment they've been in the last two years. Yep. And I think that Chance and Nekore, I'm really leaning towards that as a centre pairing. I think I'm starting to agree. I reckon that's their best, like if you've put their best 13, best 17 together, I think I would have to go Nekore. Also, because when we get to the forwards, they have a couple of replacements there as well, which we yeah. can shift around. And also, Nick Corey played a couple of games for the Eels at centre. I believe it was 2021. Played a bit, bit of a stretch there. And he was incredible. He was unbelievable. He was he was so good. And he was... Fuck, he was whacking blokes. I was um I was very surprised that the Kiwis didn't move him there to Mark Luttrell. Yeah. That, game. that would have been my move without a doubt. And I know it was something that Michael Maguire was considering throughout the year. He obviously had all, all year to look forward to that World Cup and plan it. I was very surprised they didn't play him there. So I think you've convinced me, bro. Yeah. I think that's the me. direction I'm going down. So I, ju I just yeah. think the Warriors, 
they just need to sort out their defense. We know they can score points. That, that That's not going to be an issue. They are going to score points, but you need to have... So you're, so you're saying Tamara Martin fullback? Yep. Or Metcalf, one of the two? Yep. The, the other one who missed out at six? Yep. Dylan Walker at 14. Chans at centre. Nick Corey at centre. Yep. Yeah, I'm going that as well. The direction I'd be going. I don't think they will, but that's the direction I'd be going in. Well, if, if Webster's come out and said Chans is fullback, I'd probably go... I'd still go near Corey in centres. I'd probably go Pompey as the other centre. Who would you go? Yeah, I think Pompey's a little bit more complete than Valia and Berry. I, I, yeah. I just think they need more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for sure. But yeah, I, to, to start round one. I, I think the Warriors would be mad not to play near Corey in their centres because at least it would just solve one edge. I agree. 5'8". Um, uh, I've got four, three names here. Tamara Martin, Metcalf and Volkman. I think one of those three will partner SJ. Uh, Tamara Martin or Metcalf would be my favourites, depending on which one you want to play at fullback. Ideal world, I'd love to see Metcalf start at fullback. And I'd yep. like to see Tamara Martin at six. That'd be perfect for me. But um, you all know how high I've been on Volkman for quite some time. He's another one. I'm not sure if he's ready to step in front of those two. But he has been in, in, in the system for... A year or so now. So, once again, competition for positions. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know which way I'd go if, when it comes to Martin or Metcalf at one or six, because Metcalf came through in the Cronulla system as a half, um, but then he went to fullback a little bit at Manly. I'm pretty sure, and then he's kind of come back to the Sharks and played a bit, a bit everywhere. I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's. Oh, I feel it like really matter, but yeah, I, I just feel like. Tamara Martin, I think he's a better six than he is one. Yeah. And I feel like Metcalf, I'm happy to see him in either spot. Yeah, so fair. That, that's that, that's my thinking with it. Yeah. But once again, Volkman, we know how much ability he's got. Um, he could be the guy that could bounce out of the ground as well. Yeah. Once again, if you have any injuries there between Chance, Nickel Clock start, uh, Chance, Tamara Martin, Metcalf, you've got Volkman there. Volkman's one injury away from, from being somewhere. causing a domino effect of. Yeah. Yeah, but great to have. Uh, SJ picks himself at seven. Yep. Uh, no need to talk anymore about SJ. We just hope that he finds his very best again. And yep. <clears throat> I'm going to back him in. Yeah, same. Yeah. Me too. I just... Oh, I, I love said, everything about Shawnee. Just right off the fucking yeah. last few years for the Warriors. All right, let's get into the forward pack. And good God, it's a strong forward pack. Uh, AFB, he picks himself in the front row. Uh, the alpha in this team. Love everything about Adam Fanua Blake. One of the best props in the game. Without a doubt. Uh, I, I think he's the most slept on prop. Easy. And, and it's purely because he plays for the Warriors. Yeah, 100%. Um, my other front row, I've got Torhu Harris here. I know a lot of people yeah, like him on an edge. I know a lot of people like him at 13. I don't think he has the hands to play 13. He can do a job there. But I think there's other guys that are better suited. I would rather have Torhu just as a front rower. Yeah, and he gets he, – that's his bread and butter, getting through just a shit ton of work so effectively. And as I've spoken about a number of times, I love when your front rowers have different body shapes. Mm. And these two are very different. Couldn't I really different. like yeah. that. Yeah. Torhu Harris, with the, you know, they've both got great offloads, both sort of different body sizes. I really like it. Uh, Wade Egan. He would be my hooker. I think Definitely. he's been really good the last few years. Obviously came from the Penrith system a couple of years ago. was an outstanding junior. Yep. Probably a little bit slow to start, but I think he's really found his way. Yeah, and he was there. always quite good uh, when he played for Penrith in the uh, the reserve grade. So, yeah. Yeah, I think Wade Egan's done well. Back row. Now, if you're not going to play Marata near Corey in the centres, I think he's an absolute shit-in to be in the back row. Yep. But I would have him in the centres, which means that my back rowers would be Josh Curran. I know he's a good 13, but I've got someone else in the 13 jersey. And I think if you're going to have Dylan Walker at 14, it means that... Whoever plays lock to start is playing l limited minutes, and I want Curran on there for 80 minutes. Yep. So you have Curran on Curran on the first edge. Yep. And then Barnett, Barnett on, the second? on the other side. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd have Curran and Barnett. I think Mitchie Barnett. Uh, I think it'll be a great little signing. I know he's got a brain explosion in him and whatnot, but you need some of those guys in your side. And 100%. if if you've got Barnett, Jazz, and Adam Fanua Blake on the field. You're not to be fucked with, mm. which I love, and yeah. I, I'd love to see the New Zealand Warriors really take an approach this year that it's going to go back to when you fly to New Zealand, you're going to need an ice pack on the on the plane home. Yeah, it might not win, but fuck will make life hard for you. Yeah. So if you got if let's say they don't put Nakora at center, yeah, then who are your edge players? I would go with Nakora. I, I think they just need him on the field personally, and yep. then I would probably go. Then I would probably go Barnett on the. 
on the other edge, and then yep. I'd probably play Curran at Curran 13, 13, but I don't like that. Yeah, fair. Dylan Walker is such a good sign. I know, I know that they've made good again. signings. I, I think he could be their best one, potentially. Yep. I, I think he could have huge impact for them. I love what he's done for Manly. Mm. I think he's going to leave... Uh, he will leave a bigger hole than Fozzett Manly, I think, mm. next year, just because they've got shoes. We've spoke about this on Bloke in a Bar. But because you've got Dylan Walker and you're going to bring him on uh, as a middle... My th- ideally, I would rather have my 13 as Jazz and you just let him go berserk for the opening 30 and probably the last 15 or so. Yeah, fair enough. Just with Walker, isn't it funny how the games change? So 10 years ago, or say oh, nine years ago, eight years ago. Not far off 10, yeah. When he, when he played for South in the GF, he was one of the best. Well, He was, a he was the best centre that year, I think. Yeah, yeah. best centre that year, rookie centre, amazing. How his role has just changed. Like, nothing's really changed about him. Not not that much. No. Um. Like, he's just... That position didn't even exist 10 years ago. Well, he's essentially gone from centre. Then he moved into 5'8 for Manly. Eight, yeah. Then he's essentially playing lock now. He might wear 14, but he comes on the field as a 13. Yeah. And it's just his leg speed through the middle that's tremendous. And um, I don't know. I, I think... I think, like, back then, if you're on the bench, people sort of saw it as you weren't as good as the other 13. I just think the bench now, it is... The, the game's about when you've got guys on the field. Like, look at Havili for South. Like, he, he played such an important role for the bench this year. Like, every team now, well, not every team, but, like, a, most teams have a guy on the bench who, A, can cover a few positions, but most importantly can provide impact in different ways. And I think Walker's one of the best in the comp at that for sure. The beauty of Walker uh, also, not that this is a team that needs a little bit more versatility off the bench, but no matter where you get an injury on the field, you can cover it by bringing on a Dylan Walker. Crazy, isn't it? It's unbelievable. Like, literally, if you have a front row get injured, you can move a Nair Corey or a Barnett up there yep. or a Jazz or whatever and move. Like, he can cover every position on the field. Yeah. It's, 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 what a, what a great signing. And, and they signed him pretty early last year as well. Yep. So they obviously had a quick look at him play that kind of role for Manly. And because they signed him up for three years, I think. So it, yeah. he's, got a, he's got a simple role. That's extremely important, and I think he'll be he'll be imperative to the Warriors this year. There's a little bit of history there too. Him and Adam Fanua Blake, they came through with the mascot Jets together as well. They played their junior mm. footy together, so True. they're good mates as well. Um, mate, that's our forward pack. Uh, There's as many mascot Jets in the Warriors as there is the Rabbitohs. Yes, there are there <laughs> are a few in there. Uh, I think that will do us for their forward pack. Uh, yep. Obviously, that's Starting, just a yep. jigsaw puzzle you you got to put together yourself. Yep. Their bench, we've already spoken about the 14, the utility. Dylan Walker, he shits in there. I think Ben murdoch Masilla, BMM, yeah. he's an automatic there. Big body, doesn't have huge minutes in him, but can have impact. And when you've got Torhu and Adam Fanua Blake, you don't need big minutes off your bench, realistically. Yeah, exactly right. Um, they just need a couple of big bodies on the bench. Um, Bunty Afaro as well, that can come on and, you know, cause a bit of impact with their size and strength, uh, even if it's for limited minutes. Yeah. So I think they've got a really good balance having, you know, two absolute motors in the forwards, like Adam Fanua, Blake and Toe Harris, and then off the bench comes a little bit of impact so that don't have to play a lot of minutes, but uh, gets a job done for them. Yeah, I, I think they'll have Ben Murdoch Masilla. I think they'll have Bunty Afoa. And then yeah. I, I, I think Tom Ayle is probably the next one. He's been here yeah. a few times he's played. But I would have Murdoch Masilla and Bunty Afoa in front of him. In front of him. Jersey 17. Um, if you haven't got Jazz at 13, he'd be my 17. Yep. If he is in the starting side, I'd be looking towards Bailey Sirenen. Yep, me too. Um, they've also signed a kid from the Dragons who I've always been a huge fan on who's never quite kicked on, Jackson Ford. Mm-hmm. He, he just needs an opportunity. I, I think he'll be one of those Siren and Murchie sort of characters they've had the last two years where when he gets his opportunity, he'll really impress you. Just quietly, I like, I like Murchie a lot. Yeah, good little grab by Parramatta. He's good. I think, yeah, Parramatta done well there. Yeah, I, I said it the other day on Bloke. I, I think it's very ballsy of Ryan Madison to take a month off at the start of the year to give Hopgood and Murchie an opportunity to show what they can do. Agreed. Agreed. Very, very ballsy. So, it's Warriors side, my bench, Walker, Murdoch, Masilla, Bunty, a foe up, then probably Bailey, Sirenen is how I would run. That's if Jazz is in the starting team. If not, uh, I've got him there. So, this Warriors team, uh, it's good. They've made good signings. Uh, I think, unfortunately, I think the Warriors could be the team that improves and gets heaps better, but doesn't move on the ladder. I hope not. I hope not. I... It's hard. It's hard because every team has is improving. But I just... I have faith in the Warriors this year because 
of the fact that they're going to play in New Zealand. I, I just think yeah. they'll grow an extra leg and they'll get a few... Like, they came 15th last year, didn't they? Let's have a look. 15th, yeah. And, so, th- and that's what I'm saying. You know, they finished 15th this year. They could improve and finish 15th, which means there's two teams below them instead of one. And they're still yeah, that's true. Moves. Adding in the Dolphins makes it interesting. I just, I just, I've got too much hope, you know? I just, I just hope they go well because I see a lot of, um, I remember, so when the draw came out, yep. I put up a, po- uh, a story on my Instagram of um, how South aren't in Sydney for like six weeks in a row or eight weeks in a row or something. It's because of the Women's FIFA World Cup. You noticed that, did you? Yeah, I did straight <laughs> away. I couldn't believe it. Um, I put up a, po- uh, put up a story whinging about it. And I had like a few Warriors fans, more than a few actually. Oh, I and I tell you this. what, I, yeah. I love Warriors fans because like they they they're not like they're not they're not fuckwits when they reply to you. It's like a it's like they like they're having a go at you, but like it's in like a good a yeah. good way. And every single one of them, they're like, oh, try try being a Warriors fan, try being a Warriors fan. Every time I looked, at it, I was like, yeah, yeah, I've been checked, and <laughs> I probably deserve it. Yeah. That is, I'm absolutely whinging for no reason here. So I just. It's good to be humbled sometimes. Oh, i absolutely be humbled. But Warriors fans, I'm, I'm all about you this year. Like I, I really hope you go well. Yeah, I just... It's going to be a new spine, a new coach. I worry that if they lose either Tohu Harris or Adam Fanua Blake, I really worry about them then. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I hope they do well. And, you know, like there's obviously... You know, they, they, they've got good depth because we spoke about so many guys there that, that could be in that side. They've got um, Freddie Lussick there as well, who he's not in the team at the moment. So got a replacement nine there as well. You could potentially ch- chuck Walker in at nine if you were desperate too. So plenty of options, plenty of depth. Returning home, new coach, new spine. Question. Round one, Warriors versus Knights in Wellington. Who's going to win? Once again, mate, as you said, the only thing that makes me wonder who's going to win is because it's in New Zealand. Mm. If it was in Newcastle, I'd back Newcastle in every day of the week. Yeah, me too, actually, I think. I still think uh, Newcastle's in for a nice little season. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think round one, the Warriors will be really up for that one. That is the official turning of the page, starting a new chapter. So I might back them in for what... Have you got their first five weeks there, Matty? Yeah, so they go Knights in Wellington. Yep. Roosters away, Cowboys away, Bulldogs in Auckland, Sharks away. So it's not easy. I hate to say it, but they could go 0-5. But then, like, you look at the middle of the year, you know, fuck, then then they go Knights again, then Cowboys, then Storm, then Roosters, then Panthers. So then after, so that's first round, 10 rounds, pretty tough. Then they got the, they got the Dogs, and we don't know how the Dogs are going to go. That's away, though. Then they got a bye, then they got the Bronx. They always go pretty well against the Bronx. They got the Dolphins. Fuck, who knows about the Dolphins? And they got the Raiders. Don't know about the Raiders. Another bye. Then the Dragons. Like that. That's a that's a winnable stretch of games there. Uh, I know I'm being very optimistic. Oh, well, I, like the the only ones I would confidently back them into beat there are the Dolphins and the Dragons. Yeah. Confidently, the other ones. Yeah, you're right. It, it is sort of up in the air. And you know, we we saw. You know, the way we're talking about the Warriors is exactly how we would have spoken about the Cowboys at the start of last season. So anything can happen. Anything also, can be turned sorry, around. Sorry, just to finish their year though. So after their bye in round 22, they got the Titans. Yep. They got the Tigers. They got Manly. They got the Dragons. They got the Dolphins. Okay. That's a good little finish. That's a great finish. So if, if they can stay relevant. Yeah. If they're, if, they're, if they're in that congested middle, it'll be a huge effort if they are, then I'm backing them. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying I'm predicting that to happen, but like if they can be, yeah, you're right. If they can be thereabouts, you know, with about five, six weeks to go. They, they, they could be looking good at the end of the year. Let's just hope, let's just hope they don't, you know, go 0-10 or whatever. I hate to say it and I hope I'm wrong. I've got them 13, 14, 15. Where do I have them? I'll have a look. Yeah, I, I think I've got them like below, I don't, I don't know where to find it. Like I've got them below like, for example, your Canterbury's, your Knights. Your, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's so hard. When Are you confident they finish higher than the Dragons? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, look, I'm sorry, Dragons fans, but I'm not too yeah. high on the Dragons this year. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and once again, the Warriors are another one of those teams that they've improved, but the 
10 teams ahead of them have either improved or underachieved last year. Who You got the, tit- the Titans or the Warriors? Probably Titans, I think. Yeah, fair. Man, it's, it's, it's very interesting, isn't it? It's very... It's, I, don't, I can't remember the last time. As I said before, like, obviously the drag... The funny thing with the Dragons is, even though nothing's changed, like, the Dragons somehow find a way to just be relevant in some ways. They do. Yeah, they, they, um, they just manage to hang in there. But I just... <sighs> but, like, yeah, but as I said, look look under the Dragons this year. Manly Turbo coming back. Bulldogs have signed well. The Titans have signed well. The Knights have signed well. The Warriors have just had mass changes. And the Tigers have signed well. Every team below the Dragons, though, have solved the major problems that they had. Yeah. In my opinion, so... Oh, yeah, look, dra- yeah, Dragons, I'm I'm not... Oh, yeah, I'm... Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, back to the Warriors. Uh, they've done well this year. They've obviously lost a lot of troops. They've replaced a lot of them. They've done very well. It's just uh, the difference that Reese Walsh is going to make is my biggest worry. In saying that, I genuinely, and I've said it for a few years, I think Luke Metcalf is the sort of guy that's got the ability to explode. Yep. I think Volkman's got the ability to explode. And, you know, you have got the big forward pack. So all of a sudden, if some of these young guys really kick on for the Warriors, all of a sudden we're looking at the Warriors back to their most exciting footy where you've got these offload machines in AFB, Tohu Harris, Barnett, Josh Curran, and then you've got these expansive halves and, you you know, I, I there, there's potential there for this Warriors team to not only be successful but be entertaining as fuck. Oh, yeah. And just on Metcalf, I think as well the last few years he's been like a few, like circumstantial why we haven't really seen him. Like, last year he signed with the Warriors early, so the Sharks just didn't play him, which yep. I guess is fair. And before that, when he was at Manly, he did his ACL or something. Like, he got a terrible, terrible injury. I think he... Because he killed it in the nines. And I can't remember if the injury was before or after that, but, like, he... You know, he's he's only 23, but there's a reason we haven't seen a whole heap of him. Uh, so I'm really hoping... Because he's a gun. He, he he actually, fun fact, he played New South Wales under-18s. He scored a hat-trick at halfback. Yeah, right, okay. Mm. And I mean... Yeah, one of the, I, one of, fuck, one of the best games that was as well. Yeah. Yeah, so good. And I, I think game. it is becoming more and more common, you know, you look at your Cody Walkers and there's been a heap of other guys, Nico Hines, yeah. that are coming in a little bit late. They've obviously come in much later than what a Luke Metcalf has. Uh, but Did you know Mike Hussey debuted for Australia Test Match when he was 30? Yeah, I think I actually it was one of the few cricket things I did know. How yeah. crazy is that? Unbelievable. He was 30. 30 years old. One of our greats. All timers. Mm. All right, Warriors, best of luck next year. I, I, I hope they reward you, Warriors fans. And, uh, Matty, I guess shout out to the Warriors fans as well who oh, have the best. supported bloke, guru, everything so much over the last three years. It's been tough and there hasn't been too many positives. It's just been constant <clears throat> thanking and a little bit of sympathy. You, you know what I love the most about the Warriors fans? Is the amount that messaged me and go, we don't want fucking sympathy anymore. Yeah, oh, we just fine. want to win. We want to play and win. 100%. I love that. Attitude. You don't want to pity them anymore. Like no, it's, you it's, don't want to because, yeah, it's, it's not what they want. I love that. Nah. Absolutely love it. So that's why maybe that's why I'm a little, maybe my, I'm a, like a little deer in the headlights when I'm talking about the Warriors, just because I truly hope they go well this year. So do I. Come on, Warriors. Let's go on, Warriors. Yeah, let's go on, Warriors. Uh, thanks for joining us once again, guys. We'll have another off-season episode dropping on Sunday night. So stay tuned for that one, and we'll talk.